Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I'm super excited because I get an opportunity to talk to you about a really, really interesting physics problem. And the, what makes it so interesting is that it is not intuitive. We are just not used to dealing with objects that rotate. You might think you know what's going on with objects that rotate, but I'll show you a very, very cool example of this spinning bicycle wheel. And it might blow your mind a little bit. You might think I'm pulling a trick on you, but I'm not. Okay, so the setup I have today is pretty straightforward. We've got just a standard bicycle wheel. There are a pair of handles attached to it, and that just allows me to hold on to it. On one end, I also have an eye hook, and that will allow me to suspend it uh, from this bungee cord here, which is connected up above. All right, so my first question is pretty straightforward. I'm going to connect this bicycle wheel here to the hook. What happens if I let it go? I know what you're thinking. This is way too easy, Physics Ninja, come on. So let's go have a look. Ready, lock in your questions. I'm just gonna remove my hand here. What do you think is gonna happen? Ah, oh, just fell down, right? Just remove my hand. First, it's in equilibrium. I remove this hand, it falls down. Okay, so why does it fall down? Try to argue it in terms of the forces acting on this system. There's only two forces. It makes the, uh, makes the physics a little bit simpler. Uh, there's tension over here in this bungee cord. There's also a force of gravity acting on the wheel, and that's acting straight down. So again, I remove my hand. There it goes. Now that was an easy case. It was easy because the object did not have any angular momentum to begin with. And what happens? Well, the force of gravity produced a torque on the system, so it made it start spinning like this. That case is very intuitive to us. We're kind of used to that case. Uh, this case here, on the other hand, is something you're not used to in everyday life. It's very non-intuitive. So let me have a look at it. What I'm going to do, it's the same problem, except this case, I'm going to spin the object. And to get it spinning as fast as I can, I'll remove it from the hook. So let me go ahead and give this a really, really good spin, and then I'll connect it to the hook. And I'll remove my hand. What do you think happens in that case? Very non-intuitive. Do you think it just, again, it just keeps spinning? And then it just does the same motion? It just keeps its spin? That seems quite logical to me. That would be an intuitive answer to this problem. Let's have a, see, let's have a look and see what happens. Give it a really hard spin. A couple ninja chops over here. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to connect it to the hook. Get ready. I'm going to remove my hand. Have a look at it. It's not falling. Isn't that amazing? Why is gravity not pulling down on it? It's just staying right at the same level. It is processing, mind you. Right? That is kind of cool. It is processing. But it does not drop. Mother Nature has a really, really odd way of dealing with things that are rotating. What if I had made it spin in the opposite direction? If I want to make it spin in the opposite direction, i got to give it a good chop here with my left hand. So let me go ahead and do that. Go ahead and put it back on the hook. Remove my hand. Look at that. Again, it's not dropping. It is processing, however, in the opposite direction. Why would something just process under the opposite direction with these two forces acting on them? This is a very non-intuitive physics problem. I hold it in one direction, it wants to go this way. I hold it in the opposite direction, it wants to go the other way. Look at that. It's just going to do its own thing. Very cool. All right, if you watch the rest of the video, we'll go into why this happens. Very interesting physics problem. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right, to understand what I'm going to show you, uh, we have to discuss a couple physical properties. The first one is torque. And this one you're probably a little bit familiar with because you kind of hear it in everyday life. Uh, so torque is pretty straightforward. Uh, if I want to make this object rotate, one way I could do that is I can take my right hand and push toward the camera. 
and I could take my left hand and pull this way toward me. And what would happen in that case, you see that the bike wheel would rotate like this. Now if I went out in space and did this far away from the earth, where there's no other force other than the force of my hand, and I would do this, I would tend to make the object rotate. And if I stop, if I remove my hands, this wheel would continue to rotate forever and ever. Another problem I could have is, well, I could apply a torque in a different direction. What if instead if I push down on this handle and I pull up on this one? In that case, we know what's going to happen, right? The wheel is going to rotate like this. Uh, if I was out in space and I did this, then I removed my hands, this object would then continue to rotate forever and ever. Alright, so we've got that torque concept down a little bit. We have to take it one step further, however. We have to define torque as being a vector quantity, and I'm going to help you with that. Uh, mathematically, torque is defined as the cross product between uh, variable r, which is a vector that goes from a point all the way to where the force is being applied. And it's a cross product between that vector and the force. So let's take a very, very simple example. We know that if I want to make an object rotate, I have to apply torque to it. One way of doing that for this bicycle wheel would be to push down on the wheel. Right? If I push down on the wheel, I make the wheel spin. So I've actually applied torque to this wheel. I applied a force that is acting down. Now this object is spinning about an axle, which is going right through the center of the wheel. So the vector r in this case goes from where the axle is, or the point where the object is rotating about, all the way to where the force is being applied. That's the vector r. The vector f in this case is the applied force that I'm applying to that wheel. That is a force acting down. To find the direction of the torque, uh, what you have to do now is use the right hand rule. And it's very, very straightforward. You take your right hand, very important, and you place your, your fingers in the direction of the vector r. So in this case, it goes from the pivot all the way to the force is being applied. I take my right hand and I do it like this. The right hand rule says now I curl my fingers toward the direction of the force. In this case, the force was acting down. So I take my fingers and I curl them toward the direction of the force. My thumb gives me the direction of the torque for this problem. So when I apply a force down, in this case the torque is coming out of the page. It's coming toward you. If instead, if I applied a force acting up to make this wheel spin in the opposite direction, in this case the force vector would be up. So if I would do my right hand rule, put my fingers along the vector r that goes from the pivot to where the force is being applied, curl my fingers toward the force, my thumb now is pointing away from you, so the torque is pointing away from you. Alright, the other physical quantity that I need to describe for you to fully understand this problem is something called angular momentum. It's kind of analogous to linear momentum if an object is moving in a straight line, uh, a mass for example, a car or a bicycle, it has a property called linear momentum, which is the mass of the object multiplied by the velocity. Now linear momentum was a vector quantity, so guess what? Angular momentum is also going to be a vector quantity. Uh, angular momentum is associated with rotation, so things that spin have angular momentum. So to find the direction of the angular momentum, very, very straightforward. Again, it's a different kind of right hand rule from the torque, but it's similar. But it's even a little bit easier because all you have to do is you take your right hand and you place your fingers in the direction of the rotation. So if the bike is spinning like this, place my fingers along the direction of the rotation and your thumb gives you the direction of the angular momentum vector. Now how do I make the angular momentum vector bigger? Well, one thing I could do is I can make the object spin faster. So this object has more angular momentum because it's rotating at a higher rate. Okay, so we've got two quantities, torque and angular momentum. Now let's look at some really interesting physics associated with these two quantities. Okay, so we're going to start off simple. Start with my wheel. If it's not spinning, it has no angular momentum. What I'm going to do now is apply a torque to it. I'm going to place a force in that direction on this handle, a force in this direction on this handle, and let's see what happens. It starts to spin. It's not spinning. I apply a torque. It starts to spin. 
Wow, big deal. I knew that. I knew that was going to happen. All right, here's a more complicated problem now. What do you think is going to happen if I first spin the wheel? So if it has angular momentum, what do you think happens to it? Let me get it spinning really, really fast. Give it a couple ninja chops here. All right, it's going really, really fast. All right, I'm going to apply a torque. Again, the torque is going to be in the up direction because I'm applying a force toward you and a force away from you. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Do you see that? Do it again. <laughs> I am applying a force straight out and see what happens. Look what happens to the wheel. Here we go again. <laughs> Did you see what happens? What if I apply a torque in the opposite direction? So that means that with uh, this handle over here, I pull toward me. What do you think is going to happen? Do you see what happens? It tilts. Why would an object tilt if I'm applying a force going out that way and a force with this hand coming in this way? Why does it tilt? That's my first question. So try to understand why this object tilts. When I get it spinning, so it's spinning really, really fast, it has an angular momentum vector now that's pointing like this. That's given by my right hand rule. I place my fingers along the wheel. All right, let's have a look at it again. Apply a torque to it. Oh, man. Nature really has a weird way of reacting when I do that. Why is that? All right, so for you to understand everything that I'm going to show you today is you have to understand how to find the direction of the angular momentum and finding the direction of the torque. And when there's a torque applied, it wants to change the angular momentum. That's what it does. And the way that it changes, your angular momentum wants to chase the torque direction. So again, going back to my wheel example, my angular momentum is pointing in that direction. I'm going to apply a torque that is perpendicular, that is straight up. So I apply a force that is going toward you on that handle, going toward me on this handle, and have a look. What happens now? The angular momentum is like that, but the torque is straight up. What happens? The angular momentum is going to change, and in a very non-intuitive way. Look at that, it tilts the wheel. Very, very odd. This is very non-intuitive. There is no way you can guess that this is what would happen by applying torque. And you can see me struggling here just with this wheel. It's a very, very strange sensation to hold an object with angular momentum. It's not something we're used to doing in our everyday lives. Now for this problem, again, I started spinning the object like this. That means using my right hand rule that the angular momentum was pointing straight out this way. Now to understand what happens to that angular momentum vector is we have to look at the direction of the torque produced by the forces in this problem. There are only two forces acting in this problem. There's a tension force over here, and there's also the force of gravity, which acts at the center of mass of this object. Now, the tension force is acting right on the pivot. Therefore, that force does not produce a torque. I need to be a certain distance away from a pivot in order to produce a torque. Let's think about what is the direction of the torque produced by the force of gravity. In this case, the force is acting down. That's the force of gravity, the weight of the object. And the vector r is a vector that goes from the pivot to the point where the force is being applied, which is, again, right at the center of the wheel. So using our right-hand rule, we have the vector r, which is that way. We have that the weight or the force of gravity acting down. So I got to curl my fingers r toward f. And my thumb gives me the direction of the torque produced by the force of gravity. In that case, have a look. The torque is coming straight out toward you. But initially, my angular momentum was going that way. So think about what does that angular momentum want to do? Right? We talked about this earlier. The angular momentum wants to chase the torque. So it starts off by being this large vector in that direction. And the torque is pointing toward you. But what does that vector want to do? It wants to chase the torque. But as it starts to spin, as this object starts to spin, what happens? The torque also changes direction. So that's why it continues this processional motion 
Because once it moves a little bit, think about the direction of the torque now. Again, it's R cross F. The torque now is in a different direction. The angular momentum is pointing straight out of this axle. So and therefore it wants to chase the torque, so it keeps moving, keeps moving. So you always get this processional motion. Very, very non-intuitive. All right, think about what happens now. Instead of spinning it like the way I've been doing, I'm gonna to try to spin it the opposite direction. Let's get it going in this direction here and redo the problem. So it's spinning in the opposite direction now. What do you think is going to happen? Have a look at that. It's now processing in the opposite direction. Very, very interesting problem. <laughs> Such a cool problem. All right, let's try something else now. Get it spinning really, really fast. What if I connect it like this? I don't even know if this can be done. Oh, look at that. It keeps that angle. It keeps the angle upright. Oh, now it's slowing down. Pretty cool. Show you something else that happens. <laughs> 